May the 4th be with you. Today is May 4th, the international day where we recognize everything that is Star Wars. We recognize the entirety of that vast galaxy far, far away, long, long ago, that really has captured the world. Today, by the way, I am going to be offer, offering some spoilers on the Star Wars movie. Um, normally, I, I maybe I would say, sorry about that. You've had 40 some odd years to see this movie. It's on you. If you don't know how this movie ends, don't blame me. You've had a million different chances, a million different ways that you possibly could have seen how this whole thing's going to unfold. But today, I want to offer a little bit of a theological reflection on Star Wars. In particular, I want to talk about Obi-Wan Kenobi, old Ben. He's, he's Luke's mentor at the beginning of this movie. Luke seeks him out for help, and, and Obi-Wan, realizing that it's time to come out of his self-isolation, time for him to come out of his hiding, to confront what's happening in the universe and the galaxy, he goes with Luke and they go off on a mission to rescue Princess Leia, to help Princess Leia escape. Now, can't tell you the entire movie, just don't have the time, but the bottom line is they're captured. They're captured on the Death Star where Leia is being held prisoner. Obi-Wan takes it upon himself to go off to disable the, the tractor beam so that the ship they're on, the Millennium Falcon, can escape when they get the princess, when they help the princess escape. The thing about this is, is that Obi-Wan, again, he understands it's time to confront the evil of the galaxy. He understands it. He has an experience with this empire. He, he knows where they've come from. And he knows the evil that they represent. But he also knows that that evil is going to come looking for him. And that evil is going to seek him out. And that evil is going to engage him and confront him. And that evil is going to do everything it can to destroy him. Of course, we're talking about Darth Vader. So, Obi-Wan goes away. As the rest of the team goes off to help Leia escape, Obi-Wan goes off to disable the tractor beam. He disables the tractor beam. He encounters Vader. They fight. They have this amazing fight with lightsabers. As a kid seeing that, I was just enthralled. It was incredible. There it was. They have this fight. And Vader, ultimately, is seen to have destroyed Obi-Wan. But only after Obi-Wan has looked over his shoulder and recognized, seen, that the team he was there to protect, the team he was there to help, is this close to escaping, that they're on their way, that they're safe, that they're going to get off the Death Star and they're going to get out of there. And that's when he allows himself to be defeated. Now, as a kid, he died. As an adult, we look at the movie and go, oh, yes, he went into that spiritual realm of the Force. The sacrifice, of course, we can see it as he did that to help them escape. And we could limit it to that. He did it so that they might escape. But if we limit it to their escape, then we dismiss much of the importance of his sacrifice in that moment. He didn't sacrifice himself just so that they could get off the Death Star. He sacrificed himself so that Leia could take the information she possessed back to the Rebel Alliance, so that the Rebel Alliance could engage. The Rebel Alliance could be the force that they needed to be to rid the galaxy of the evil empire. He sacrificed himself so that the Rebel Alliance could ultimately send the fleet, destroy the Death Star, have a great victory, and bring hope to the galaxy. He sacrificed himself so that the Rebel Alliance could truly begin their mission in full. You and I, in Star Wars parlance, we, as Christians, are meant to be that rebel alliance. Recognizing the power of the crucifixion, of the resurrection, of the ascension, we are called to be the bringers of light into this world. 
We are called to action against the things in this world that would feed off of our brothers and sisters. We are called to action against those things that would feed off of the vulnerable, that, that would enrich themselves off the poor, that would empower themselves from the powerless and the hopeless. We are called to action as the Rebel Alliance was called to action after the sacrifice of Obi-Wan Kenobi, we are called to live a life of action against the darkness of this world, against greed, against hate, against anything that would see itself standing against love. The power of the crucifixion is enormous but it is only seen in the world by our action, by what we do, by what we offer, by how we live. If Leia and Han and Luke and Chewie and the rest of them had said, oh great, you know, we're free. Ben's sacrifice minimized. It becomes about four people. It becomes less than what it truly is. But because they shared what they had, because they took it as a, an opportunity to be a part of something greater, because they were willing to invest themselves in that fight, Ben's sacrifice takes on the glory it is meant to take on. You and I, when we come to know Jesus, we can take his sacrifice to be about us. And that's wonderful. But then it's just about us. We, like Leah, Han, and Luke, we need to be willing to take our place in the world post-sacrifice, to find our place in, in the struggle, to make this world what it could be, to make this universe what it could be. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord's face be made to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord's countenance be lifted up to you. May you always know the peace of being in the Lord's presence. And may the force be with you. Amen.